Pfizer present the main event of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman, Dr. Elias Ghanem. Commissioners, Nat Karasali, Bruce Lane, Luther Mack, and Dr. James Nave. Chief Inspector, Mark Ratner. Ringside Supervisors, representing the IBF, Walter Stone. The WBA, Manuel Landero. The WBC, Jeffrey Gildenhorn. Physicians in attendance, Dr. Flip Homansky and Dr. Al Capana, along with Dr. James Wishgame. Timekeeper, Jane Broadfoot. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Mike Lasella. The scoring for this bout will be done on a three, a ten point must system, and the three judges assigned to ringside are Chuck Jumpa, Jerry Roth, and Dalby Shirley. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the fight Working for the 52nd time in a world title match, referee Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of the Mirage. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, Fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red trim, and weighing in at 235 pounds. This 1988 U.S. Olympian and silver medalist has a perfect professional record of 31-0. His two-handed punching power has earned him 27 KOs. And tonight, he stands on the threshold of greatness. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, the number one heavyweight challenger in the world, Riddick. Daddy Bo! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red with black trim, and weighing an even 205 pounds. He's also a U.S. Olympian, a bronze medalist from the great team of 1984. He was the first of that team to win a world title as a professional. His record now stands at 28-0, scoring 22 knockouts and capturing two world championships. Tonight, he is appearing in his 11th world title bout, defending his heavyweight championship for the fourth time. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, this Georgia, you, baby. You're the presenting the undefeated, undefeated heavyweight That's champion right. of the world, Evander Real Deal Holyfield. Come on, baby. We went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to take yourself at all times, shake hands, good luck to both of you. Watch that front! Jim, the conventional wisdom in this fight is that Holyfield will try to fight the big bow as he fought George and Buster Douglas, staying outside, jumping in with quick combinations. But sooner or later, a fight is going to break out here. It might be sooner. Hey, take that out and there. then which rules will apply? Will it be bigger man, bigger punch, a quick knockout for Riddick Bow, or will it be the man with greater experience and ring guile who controls the action? That is likely to be Holyfield. First round begins, both men throwing jabs. There's a rule of thumb, don't jab with a jabber, and George Foreman, Riddick Bow has one of the best jabs we've seen in the heavyweight division in the last two decades. And Evander Holyfield's corner realized that they stacked so much grease on his forehead, conceding they're going to get hit, hit with a lot of jabs. Never seen a referee let that much grease go on. One of the wonderful things about Evander for spectators is that he is no great defensive fighter. He does get hit. So, for that matter, does Bo. Good left hook to the body by Evander Holyfield. And the left hook to the jaw. And Holyfield is quicker to the punch early in the fight. Riddick Bo smashing that jab into Holyfield's face. And you saw the champion clinch his head back just a little bit. Holyfield has started to throw combinations early because he doesn't like the idea of exchanging jab after jab. Bo should go right back to his left jab if he wants to stay in control of his fight. And you saw Holyfield land the right-hand lead. The right-hand lead is a big punch in his arsenal tonight. He believes the way to neutralize Bo's overwhelming right hand is to beat him to the punch with right-hand leads of his own. And also to start hitting him and making him decide to forget about the jab. 
which he's doing a good job right now. He's starting with right hands early to get Bo to start in the exchanges. Holyfield again scoring a combination. So far, this is a very good round for Evander, who has been able to mount his attack and get away from Bo. Uh, Bo has landed the jab, but no power punches so far. Now, Evander at this point is doing everything he's been told to do. Bo hasn't established yet in his instructions with the corner what they want him to do. Just being Bo at this point. But if Bo stays out there at the end of Holyfield's jab, Holyfield remains far away at the end of Bo's jab, and that could be bad for the jab, George. Bo has just got to stay interested in the jab. Evander Holyfield has got to try to make this guy start fighting. Bo trying to land an uppercut. He believes that as Holyfield comes to him, he can neutralize the champion's rushes with those uppercuts. He lands the punch very effectively. Again, Holyfield scores with the left-right combination. Bo answers with one punch in return. And Holyfield again, getting the best of a center ring exchange. For the first time in the fight. Both fighters getting off now in the latter stages of round number one, and maybe that fight, Larry Merchant, is about to break out. Holyfield has already warmed up doing exactly what he wants. And Bo has an uncertain look on his face at the end of round one. Well, like I said, it might as well be sooner than later. Keep that jump. You, you know them sets of twos? Yeah. Okay, to keep the set of twos going, keep sticking them and standing. Now you're doing a good job on the inside. Don't wrestle with him. Just let him throw you around. Yeah. Yeah. You got me tell them? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That's good. How you feel? Yeah. Uh, it's a beauty block. Uh, that's that's beauty the stick that's, Look, stick him in the chest too now. Remember, all right? Okay. Double him up in the chest. Two in the chest, right? So yeah. don't get all right, let's take a look at the exchange here and see how Holyfield is beating Bo to the punch early in this fight. What Holyfield is trying to do right now is send a message to Bo that this isn't like anything else you've been in before. Riddick Bo has never before been asked to fight at an intensity level with which Evander Holyfield is quite familiar over the course of his career. Holyfield has been in a lot of wars. Some people say too many. Riddick Bo just stay in instructions, use his jab, Occasionally throw a right hand to make him know that's not all I've got. Stay away from the exchanges. There was the right hand fight. lead again, George. He's landing that right hand lead is Holyfield, the champion. Not only that, that left hook to the body, which hurts. Holyfield has got one of the best left hooks to the body I've ever tasted. So far, this has been a display of accurate, quick punching inside in combinations by the champion of Andrew Holyfield. And already, Bo begins to hold and hit, and they brawl in the center of the ring. Evander Holyfield showing his warrior's heart, believes he has Bo hurt. Bo throwing the right hand on the break. Joe Cortez says keep him up, the Bo on, fighters. Him, on, Bo is taking no hostages. He's decided, look, if I'm going to win this thing, I've got to take it. The referee is not going to help me. The judges are not going to help me. Bo with the right hand over the top. Lancing on, blow. Holyfield seeming to get a little bit of a rest here for a moment. At the same time, he's just sobbing a lot of punches from a big guy who's not a gentleman at all. Story of Evander Holyfield's life, though not this big, this strong, and this young before. Right hand over the top by Bo landed. Holyfield got an uppercut in. And the left hook for Holyfield. And the left hook for Bo. Both fighters landing consistently. Bo landed the jab, missed the right. Holyfield steps inside and gets in two good ones. Bo's got Evander Holyfield reaching in for his jab, which is what he wants. Bo trying to measure Holyfield from afar. Evander trying to step up inside and stay inside Bo's power. I think Evander just doesn't know exactly what to do right now. He's catching a lot of shots he wasn't told he would beat. He's able to he's catch fighting the wrong early. fight, George. Oh, no fight. doubt about it. Why should he bump into this big guy and go oh, slugging with him? Why should he? Come on. There's the uppercut again by Bo. Left hook by Holyfield. 
Missed the second one. Lands the right uppercut. Body punch by Holyfield, and a good one. I think those left hooks to the body by Evander Holyfield may be the most telling blows in the whole fight. Left hooks by both, two of them. Holyfield coming back, taking and giving shots. Bo tried to go to the body with the right hand, just missed. We can tell you that both fighters have went beyond their corners now. They're no longer taking instructions. They're doing what comes naturally. They're doing what comes naturally. Good right hand by Riddick Bo. Bo has answered some questions early in this fight. He is showing a real willingness for combat. On the inside, I want you to go with a double and triple left hook, and then follow up with your right hand. Okay. He's trying to lay inside. Once about take a step back and look up. Okay, so he. In close, Bo lands a couple of short punches and seems quite happy to, to fight in exchanges with the faster punching Holyfield. That exchange was Bo's. Here we see what happened when Bo kept punching as the referee tried to stop them. Neither one, however, as yet, seems to be putting any real hurt on the other. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Round three begins. George, have you seen Riddick Bo trying to hold Evander behind the head and hit him? Not at all, but I have seen uh, Riddick Bo taking every advantage he can. When the rough say break, he hits. Holyfield firing the left twice and landing twice. I say Bo re-established that left jab. What does he need to be throwing? Right hand. Long left right hook hand by Holyfield. Almost caught Bo flush. As it was, it did a little damage, but not as much as it might have appeared to be the case. Holyfield landing inside. Bo comes right back. A slugging war between the 205-pound Holyfield and the 235-pound Riddick Bo. And I think that 235 Riddick Bo is not the 235 he should have been. He may have scaled too many pounds off his body just to look good for this fight. Do you see him running out of gas after some of these exchanges, George? No, but all of the zip is going out of that big right hand that he had a few weeks ago, a few months ago. Holyfield may beg to differ after he feels it a few more times. Bo with the left hook to the body. Holyfield covering up as Bo whacks away with the left hook. Bo was told by his corner to go to double left hook and then the right hand. Evidently, there's some magic into that. Bo landing the uppercut and the body shot. These are all Bo punches here. Holyfield, for the moment, not active. At some point, Riddick Bo is going to realize, sure, Evander is hitting me, but it doesn't hurt like it ought to be hurting. And then once that happens, it's going to be a big deal. Left hook landed by Bo after a right. Holyfield seemingly in trouble for the moment. No doubt about it, but he's a storm weatherer. Champion rests his head on Bo's shoulder and stays right there. Holyfield jabbing, trying to get back inside with the jab. Just misses with the right. Bo's corner must be screaming, get back to the jab, go back to the basics. And you saw the uppercut that Bo is so fond of tonight. Thinks he can use it to great effect. Evander Holyfield is having some vision problems. I yeah, can I tell by the whole weekend. I think the... his right eye is already cut, George. Remember the big over. cut that he got against Larry Holmes, product of an elbow. It appears to me that there's blood around Holyfield's right eye. Let's look more carefully. There's the left hook by Holyfield. And another, and another, and another. Holyfield wobbles Bo under the ropes. A series of left hooks, all of them landed flush. Let's go, come on. Right hand by Holyfield. And for the moment, it is Bo who slows down. The boy is starting to play in a play a bad game, leaning in with the old crossover. He's never done it. Why well, start it now? Three rounds of furious give and take. Now look, go to the dead weight inside. Don't load it up. Okay. Just move your hands. You understand? Okay. Right, you baby. I'm gonna give you some more. Don't rouse with him. You okay? 
Mm -hmm. You're ready, okay. Take a deep breath. He's, got, he's blowing too, so he's blowing like hell out there, baby. He's right. blowing like hell. Come on, baby. He's just right. got to suck it suck up. It up. Suck it up. All right. Let's take a look at this last exchange with those left hooks by Holyfield, who's trying to set a fast pace and wear Bo down. Bo has never had to fight a long fight at this kind of a pace. Good enough hooks, but they just don't hurt enough to make a man cover up and run. All right, suckers out. This fight may come down to conditioning and will over a long haul, George. Do I agree? Conditioning is going out of, out of both now. It's a matter of who wants to be heavyweight champ of the world tonight. Well, for the moment, it may still come down to can Evander Holyfield take all these punches from a bigger man and stand up. He's done it so far, but Bo has not landed full thunder with the right yet. And Evander, every chance he gets, he tries to rush in for a good right-hand shot. Bo keep that left jab working, stays ahead on the judge's card. He can change things tonight. But Evander is still landing that right-hand lead. Riddick Bo lands the right hand. Holyfield falls in, falling right foot after another. He's not keeping his position at all. Left hook inside by Holyfield. Bo's punches are having more effect. Bo goes to the body and Holyfield covers up. You never want to follow a puncher. Never. You want the puncher following you. Evander Holyfield giving Riddick Bo every chance to whack him out of there. Too much danger, it seems to me, in the, the first round. holding behind the head by Riddick Bo. And there's the left hook again by Holyfield. Lou Duba has prepared referee Joe Cortez to watch Bo holding behind the head. He loves to do it. Trading punches at center ring. This looks a lot like the Burt Cooper oh fight God, for Holyfield, but Riddick Bo, as his handlers will tell you, is no Burt Cooper. Oh God, you better believe it. Evander Holyfield didn't need to be in two wars like that in his career. Bo landing the left to the top of the head and then sticking the jab into Holyfield's mouth. Holyfield again stepping inside for the left hook. Every time Evander lands a good one now, he takes one in return. He has slowed down since rounds one and two. I've never seen a guy so confident of his right hand as Riddick Bowe. Even though he misses 16, he'll throw 20 more. There's a right hand shot. <laughs> Bowe must have found it partially blocked by a Holyfield glove. Holyfield with a right hand made the sweat fly off of Bowe's head. But Bowe seems unhurt. Bowe can reestablish that left jab, keep this guy vision days. He can win this thing, but he can't get in there slugging with a guy who wants to slug with him. Well, the question is, is Bo missing a chance to pile up points by not sticking with the left jab and going inside and warring shot for shot with Holyfield? They've both forgotten that there are three judges out there who can also give them as a decision. And if it's a hard fight to score, you have to suspect that Holyfield gets the benefit of the doubt. Low blow, not called by Cortez at first, and now he does. So Holyfield will get time to recover as round four comes to a close. This is an unbelievable pace for Big Man Unbelievable and unnecessary for Riddick Bowl with such a good left jab. Get the hell away from me. Keep him up, you hear? Okay. I want any rough tackling here. All right. All right? He's, he's beginning to time, boy. You got to press him more. In. Look, you're walking in without the jam. You're walking in without the jam. Jab your way in. You keep your punches short. You put the combination. Harold together. Letterman, how do you see the fight after four rounds? Larry, 39, 37, three rounds to one. Riddick Bow. I think the big guy's winning this fight in a toe to toe battle. I think he's landing the biggest shots. I have the fight two rounds apiece. All right, come on. Come on, Lou. Come There's on. the low blow. We remember from the last time we had a fight come with on. Bo, he threw a lot of low blows. Come on, come on, come on. He apologized afterwards, but we might see Amanda Holyfield exact his own price here for that low blow. In round number four, both fighters landed more than half of their punches, but Bo threw more than twice as many. 
77 shots for Bo, only 36 for Holyfield. There's a left and a right by Holyfield and the left. Bo giving the right hand in return. Left hand by Holyfield. These are solid shots, but the champion does not seem able to hurt Riddick Bo. That right hand is right in the face, but it just doesn't hurt. I guess that 205 pounds that you scale in, just not enough to drop the bigger boys in the early round. Holyfield getting back to being busy. Doubling up on the jab. Now tripling the jab. His corner no doubt having told him he has to set more of a pace if Riddick Bo is going to fight at this intensity level. Bo is making a real tactical mistake. Tactical mistake. He's looking down whenever he decides to throw to the body. Looks up when he jabs. Got to look a guy over a dead pen. I'm like Joe Lewis. One or the two. Now, right and lead again for Evander Holyfield. Hey, Evander Holyfield is getting a break. He's holding. He want to hold a little bit. It's not doing him any good with all that mix up. He hits this guy with all he has, and the guy comes back and hits him again. But if the rounds stretch out, keep in mind that Evander Holyfield is a veteran of the 12-round route, and Riddick Bowe has never been beyond 10. Sometimes the veterans have the disadvantage because they've got so many wounds. Holyfield with a right and a left, having a little bit better round this time than was the case in stanza number four. I think Bo is starting to coast in and take a second, get the breather at the wrong time. Get the hands on that, get the hands on that. Well, maybe he doesn't have any control over it, George. He's got to take a breather when he's tired, and he's got every right to be tired tonight. But you got to take a breather with your left jab. You can't take a breather just standing around. you got to keep that jab out there. That's your antenna to make sure the other guy takes a breather. And you see the length and the crispness of Bo's jab. Recognize what a weapon it can be. Both fighters swelling a little around the eyes. Two rounds ago, we saw them using the in swell on Holyfield's right eye. Cut man Ace Murata doing the job. And there have been no more traces of the blood that I had suspected I saw there earlier. discussion with Evander Holyfield, he said that the eye didn't bother him in training at all. But Riddick Bowe believes otherwise and made no secret of his intention to go after Evander's right eye. Now, Evander Holyfield is starting to take control with his jab a little more. That was a more measured round, and it was more to Holyfield's liking, I thought. Okay. This guy's gonna run out of gas. Okay. That's it. Yep. You see, he didn't run out of gas. He just run out of gas. Now look, you see, your jab is working good for you. All you gotta do is keep it going. Get, and get him to jab at you. His jab is slowed down yeah, considerably. Right, I got it, I got it. Now when you look, you, you, you only plan three, this. Only three. Make him jab, make him jab. Just step back, man. And when you're inside, I'm just throwing those hard double left hooks, double and triple left hooks. Right. And then go with the right hand. You gotta use that jab and keep your left hand high, coming back. Yeah, he's, he, he's, he's, right, he's slowed down considerably. That jab is working good. He can't get off. This guy's dying out now there, baby. Keep the jab going. Come on, keep boxing this guy with that jab. No, you're going to get it. Yeah, you're going to get it. All right, All right let's go. Second shot, come on. Come on, turn this line. Don't take no punches, baby. Get the jab. Drop down and go to the body. Come Both on. corners Stop. asking their fighters for energy. You heard Eddie Futch telling Riddick Bo to double and triple up with the left hook. And you heard George Benton and Lou Duba asking Evander, Hol Evander Holyfield to jab and move. The big rule of thumb is you never throw a left hook with a left hooker. You gotta keep that jab out there, throw a right hand, then your left hook. Holyfield has an excellent left left hook. So is Eddie giving Riddick the wrong advice? Sure, I would say, hey, keep that left hook out of the business. They traded right hands there. It was Holyfield who backed up. Bo trying to reestablish the jab. And if he does, whenever he does, he takes over the fight. And Holyfield ignoring his corner's instructions to jab and trying to reestablish the left hook inside. Now Holyfield is in a new world now. He's starting to have problems with cuts over his eyes, things that he never had before. And he could be a little worried too. Low blow by Bo, and he got away with it. Cortez says keep it up. So far, Cortez has not deducted a point from Bo, though he's been warned twice for low blow. Great referee. He's really let the guys get out there and do it. Uppercut inside by Holyfield. Action slowing down as is completely understandable. 
in round six, as Larry Merchant pointed out earlier, it was an unbelievable pace for heavyweights for a while. And the slowing down benefits Rick Bolson. He would like to get comfortable out there and feel at home like in a Spartan ring. And if he does, he's going to take over. Well, Hold Dick, Dick Gregory, who is Bo's uh, nutritionist guru, fixed him a concoction with seaweed. I hope that concoction gives him some stamina. Of course, Bo calls all of Gregory's concoctions maggot juice, but he says he drank it. The Holyfield is playing right into the hand. He's leaning forward, falling over Riddick Bo with his head, trying to just lean on the guy. You don't do that. You get one foot on the other and move around and side to side. And Bo trying to capitalize with the uppercut, and Holyfield comes back with the right-hand lead, which has been so effective for him. He gets back wisely. But now Riddick Bowen is believing he's getting back because he's hurting him. Don't give the young guys courage. Somehow I have the sense that whenever Riddick Bowe isn't throwing punches, Evander Holyfield is buying time. And logic tells me the more time the champion can buy, the better his chances become. You got to understand the true meaning of uh, stamina is truly endurance. Endurance is like who wants it more? Are you willing to take adversity and keep coming no matter what? That's true stamina. You gotta have a reason to fight like that. Nine children or so. <laughs> Both fighters showing their personality as round six comes to a close. We are halfway home to the 12 round championship distance. Stay close. Stay close. Watch the uppercut. Now when he fires at you, they just get down. You understand? Okay. Now look, don't be holding them and grabbing them. It's taking too much energy. Now listen, his, his jab is slowed down to nothing. Just take your time and go over top of it with a good right hand. You'll probably hit him on the chin. Okay. You understand? Okay. Oh, all right. You, you all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now don't, don't hold him. Halfway through. You don't need to grab him. You understand? Okay. All right, let's get your hands off. that was orchestrated by his, his manager, Rock Newman, at ringside. The other half of the crowd, or two-thirds of the crowd, started to boo. Jabs through round six. Bo has thrown 110 of them and landed 55. Holyfield has landed less than half of his jabs. I think we can say this much for Riddick Bo, guys, is that whatever message that Holyfield was trying to send early in the fight, uh, Riddick Bo took the message and came back with his own message. Midway through this fight, he's still in it, so has a very good chance of winning it. Bo lands the right hand over the top. Evander just freezes and looks at him and then comes He right was hurt. Again. Bo didn't realize that he was hurt. And now Evander is reeling as Bo lands the left hook and goes to the body to try to set up the finish. Holyfield peering through the swelling right eye, seemingly having trouble picking up Bo's punches now. It sure would be nice for once if everybody would just scream, Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield. Yeah, if we hear that cheer again, I believe it was Let's Go Bo. Rock Newman was up and leading it, and here they go. Let's Go Bo. It's all going to happen with that jab. And the part of the crowd that supports Holyfield boos lustily oh, no, no, when the no, no, Let's Go Bo chant breaks up. Now Holyfield begins to punch again, apparently having shaken the cobwebs from that no, one no, little pass. He pushed him away with his left side, posing as if he's hurting in the body. I think those below the belt punches are really starting to take some effect on Holyfield. There's also the possibility, George, that Holyfield is allowing Bo to throw in hopes that he will punch himself out. Not at all. Holyfield has taken some right hands. There's no way he can keep doing it. There's another right hand over the top. If it had been anyone else with any lesser heart, they would have been on the canvas right now. Holyfield is probably one of the greater champions of all time. In terms of his will and heart? Probably. Not in terms of his punching power, George. Not at all. He's a good fighter, and he's showing that he's a good fighter now. 
Bo, if he stays in control with this jab, can just do whatever he wants to do. Put your head to the punches up, guys. Fuck him up. For the moment, it looks more and more like an uphill fight for the champion. Riddick Bo beginning to box again and with a lot of advantages. And every shot he bend the Holyfield throws now is a shot of desperation. It's no longer a tactical shot one after another. Left hook inside. Remember that George Benton told Holyfield to throw the right hand lead over the top of Bo's jab. And he thinks that he ought to land it on the chin. But Evander hasn't been able to get that right hand lead off in this round because he's been too busy defending himself against Bo's jabs and right hands. And Bo has not started, he should open up with his long left hooks right now because the side, the right side of Evander's face is taking a beating now. Why, why not just open up with long left hooks, not the short ones? And there in the closing seconds of the round were two Evander Holyfield's right hands to answer my question about where it had gone. All right, he's flipping now. Come on up. Come on. Now listen, yeah. You suck it up. If you suck it up, you got this guy dead to rest. This guy you got nothing left. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Now you got to get your shit together. You got to keep a good defense and use that jab. And use it, use the jab and force him to jab. And every damn time he jabs, you just go over top with a big one. And come back with two, three left hooks. You understand? Because the guy slowed down, hold it feel considerably. He's tired as hell. Let's take a look and see how they're fighting at close quarters. Bo does very, very well for a big man at close quarters. I don't know why Holyfield has been leaning on him, whether he's tired or whether he's been hurt or days from time to time that we haven't seen. But he has done an awful lot of leaning inside. Let's go, hold. And Bo uses that big body well. All right, let's go, come on. And in round seven, Holyfield's punch output again went way down, matching round four earlier when he had only thrown 36 punches, this time down to 31 blows. Now, the Van der Holyfield corner once again tries to tell the shorter guy to throw jabs. No way. Get in there and start mixing it up, get this young guy tired again, and then start jabbing. Because here's what's happened when you try to jab with the jabber. Holyfield keeping himself away to try to make room for the jab and getting clocked by Bowles long left. Now there's blood on the left eye of Evander Holyfield. Is it his or is it Bo's? Let's see Evander Holyfield's yep, blood. Yep, it's his blood. Not at all. Doesn't like the blood. It's never happened to him constantly like this. He's thinking maybe I've done something wrong in life. I know what it's all about. Good left hook. Holyfield with another left hook. The champion showing his courage, pawing at his left eye to feel the blood and then raging out with the left hook. Both coming back with right hands. Sees an opportunity to perhaps finish yeah, things off. Energy levels going back up in round number eight. Lo Nevada is the oh, worst back, place in the world is to get an open out. cut. Why is that, George? Because it takes too much out of your body. As the water is going as it is, then you start losing blood. One drop seems unimportant to the average person, but a lot to a boxer. Well, Holyfield lost a fair amount of blood from the right eye in his 12-round decision over Larry Holmes. Riddick Bo is doing pretty good. Now, why would he let the guy lean on him and throw desperation shots at this point? I don't know. Come on, we got. Maybe he's reached a, t a tired passage again, George. No, it's just tactical. Just doesn't know what he's doing. Holyfield wants to stay close out of the range of those big shots. Go oh, missing the right hand over the top. Holyfield trying to stay inside of it for the moment. Now, Bo is starting to catch those left hooks, putting his hand up. But now Holyfield twice lands the left and sticks a right to Bo's guard. Bo just missed the right hand. Holyfield lands the uppercut, and Riddick comes back with one of his own. The Bo's got to realize every punch that he bent the throws at this point, they are desperate shots. Stay out of the way of them, you could get yourself hurt. And you saw Bo pawing his right eye. Yeah, he's got his vision impaired just for a bit. I think he might have gotten thumbed there for a second. And there he is pawing the right eye again. Let's see if Holyfield tries to take advantage of that opportunity. He does, and takes a right hand in return. All right, bring up, bring up, bring up, bring up. Nobody's going to be given anything. Oh, 
Let's take a look at these two eyes, and the eyes may determine what happens here if both Riddick Bowe's right eye appears to be closing as they work on Evander Holyfield. Here you see the blood pouring down Holyfield's right eye from the elbow he caught in the fight against Larry Holmes. Here you see him treating him tonight. They've opened, if, if it indeed was close as it looked, it looks as though Bo's eye has reopened. Nine. Okay. Give me so Holyfield give me with a cut above the left eye, Bo with a nick on the right eye. Was it a thumb that did that? It it's was. A shame when something like that happened. It was. It didn't. It didn't look deliberate, but it was effective. Thus, the immediate reaction by both. You get complacent. You stand around. Things like that happen. Let's see if the two cut eyes even each other out. I still have the sense that Holyfield is in more trouble than the challenger. Harold, quickly give us your score. Very quickly. La Larry, 77-75, five rounds to three. Riddick Bow. And I want to tell you something. You're fighting with 10 ounce Reyes thumb-attached gloves. A guy is not supposed to get thumbed in theory with those gloves. Yeah, but you can't avoid it. I've been thumbed and I've accidentally thumbed a lot of people myself. Okay, come on. Blow pounding away to Holyfield's body. For now, the challenger landing two or three shots for everyone he takes from the champion. Holyfield trying to come back with the jab. left jab by Bo. This jab makes you dizzy. It makes you fall forward. It makes you not be able to see for a minute. And also likely to make Holyfield worry and feel negative about the eye, something that he'd prefer not to think about. Holyfield is actually falling forward on his, the point of his feet now. But I think Riddick's right eye is closing up, George. And now Evander starts to stick the jab with more effect as Bo seems to struggle with his vision. Now a right hand by Bo sends Holyfield into the ropes. But the champion begins to bounce again. Trading right hands. Again, it was Bose, which appeared to be more effective. No doubt, Bo has won the battle of the right hands tonight, but the night is far from being over. At the same time, George, you have to question his hitting power. 235 pound man, beating on a 205 pound man, has landed a number of clean blows. And never seems to have truly stunned Holyfield. He's not truly laying any clean blows yet. Holyfield catches the shot, but his face is partially turned at all times when his gloves on top of the head, turns that head instinctively. He's a hard guy. He's dynamic, even when he's steel. And let's face it, the champion has a massive heart. He's proven that over and over. Right uppercut by Holyfield. Momentarily stuns both. Low blow by Bo. Cortez pushes them away. Bo has been instructed by his corner. When they warn you, don't move back. Keep throwing shots. Because it doesn't work to his advantage to listen to the referee. Last minute has been a little bit kinder to Evander Holyfield. He's been doubling up on some shots. Crowd booing Cortez's actions. Both fighters basically ignoring the referee. Right hand by Holyfield, and again, he shook the sweat off of Bo, but didn't move the man. Whenever Bo gets in trouble, he throws one to the booty. Holyfield can't see anything at this point. Now, before you take a point away, stop that shit. Why don't you watch your fight? How about those blood blows? I don't think you guys, you guys get the iron on that eye. Let me take care of this. Come on. Yeah, hold the pill. You got to suck it up. Now, this guy's dog got two. Yeah, Bob. Hey. Now, hold the pill. Pull it up for me. Come on. Ready with the water. Ready. Hold the pill. Red's here. Give me the water. Give me the water. The water. The water. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Okay, let's, you saw the low blow there, but the referee, despite the number of those low blows, has not taken a point away from Riddick Bowes yet. Round 10 begins. If they complete this round, 
Riddick Bowe will have gone just as far as he's ever gone before in a professional prize fight. Riddick, Riddick Bowe is able to land three good combinations now. Evander Holyfield can have his first visit to the campus. He's been a gentleman all this time. He can't understand someone being so dirty. So you see Holyfield going down in this round, and Bo stuns him with an uppercut. And just like that, the champion struggles to stay on his feet. What a heart by Holyfield. He's going to stay on his feet. He's hanging in there. Gets away from a right hand, blocks another one. Bo throwing and throwing. Now goes to the body. Holyfield somehow standing up, but staying too close to Bo. Referee. Joe Cortez watching. Champion gets the benefit of the doubt. That was a right uppercut that started that sequence. Now, Bo has got to start all over again. And don't Holyfield try to... weathers the storm and comes back throwing. If Bo starts over all over again, he can do it all over again. Let's see if he has the patience. Let him out. Let him out. Evander Holyfield's incredible powers of recovery once again on display. Remember how he came back from the knockdown against Cooper and threw one of the great left hooks you've ever seen about 30 seconds later? At that time, Evander could see. This time, Evander, Evander Holyfield has no vision at all. That left jab has been the most devastating thing in his life. Holy is only resting from all of those punches he threw. And Holyfield goes back to the right-hand lead. It's been the only weapon which has been consistently good to him tonight. Don't rest. Rest with your jab. Bo should be taking that kind of advice. Look at Holyfield. What a warrior. Reversing the tide of the battle. The champion now has Bo wobbling. And he lands the right hand. Everybody in the Thomas and Mack Center on their feet. It doesn't bother Bo because he knows he was only resting at that point. Evander Holyfield has got a heart. If he weighs 205, his heart weighs about 204. This is an amazing show, guys. I don't think he can win the fight at this rate. But just to have recovered from that beating is astonishing, I think, to most of us at ringside. If he can, Bo goes right back to the left jab, start all over, forget he's knocked this guy almost out. Go back to the left jab, start everything off. It can all happen again. This round should be greeted with a standing ovation at the end. You've seen the best of both men. A right hand by Holyfield. And another. Round 10 continues after the bell. folks because what you saw in this round it doesn't get much better than this Holyfield staggering into the corner Bo after him the young man but that conditioning and those recuperative powers how could you believe that a fellow who looks like this in the first minute and a half is going to dominate the second minute and a half of the round because Riddick Bo threw every little punch and mile of road work away now let's take a look at Holyfield coming back what a thoroughbred that man is. I don't know if he's got enough to mount the stretch run and win the round, but he is some thoroughbred. Four times in his career, Vander Holyfield has gone 12 rounds or further. Riddick Bowe now steps into unknown territory for him in round number 11. Neither fighter totally exhausted yet. Now, the bow has got to be oh, cool oh, oh, trying oh, to finish him, though. There's the uppercut again. The mouthpiece is out of Holyfield's mouth, and he's going to go down. And Holyfield gets up very early in the count. Five, six, seven, eight. Second time in his career he's been knocked down. First time he has actually gone to the campus. It could be all over for Evander Holyfield's heavyweight championship reign. He is not fighting back and seems to have no will to do so. To get out of this round would seem like a miracle. Bo 
is not the finisher, but he sure is a puncher. And when you're a clean finisher, finisher takes years to know how to do it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right stop punching. Holyfield is going for the dance now. Champion begins to bounce again. And once again, just as was the case in round 10, Holyfield, unbelievably, tries to seize the initiative. It seems oh, yeah, yeah, right yeah, uppercut is the one, a little off the short uppercut does more damage than anything he's doing. Yeah, that's the punch which has badly hurt Holyfield twice. Holyfield is elusive. He can survive. It's to his advantage that the boxing does not continue. Stay closed as long as you can. You must know people don't pay you millions of dollars for nothing. Once the tide gets tough, you gotta fight anyway. When it turns against you, keep fighting. Right hand lead by Holyfield brought his supporters in the crowd out of their seats again. But Holyfield is spent, it seems now. His handlers call him the best conditioned athlete in the world he'll have to be to make it out of this. This is a prime example of managing and training too many fighters at one time. You get into the corner and you just don't know what instruction to give what guy. Holyfield still punches, still throwing the left hook inside and the right hand lead. But, all right, all right, let him out, Uppercut by Holyfield. Blood spouting from the champion's mouth. His eyes almost completely shut. But he will not take KO for an answer in round number 11. Action in that round as Bo's uppercut seriously hurt Holyfield. This guy got nothing. The you understand? The now bring yourself back to life. Hey, come on, your life, John. You gotta do careers on this guy here. Now look, you clear. Listen, Daddy. Last round. Uh huh. Last round. Last round. Get your right, punches together. Guys all down. All right. <laughs> All right, last round, touch gloves, right? Okay. Sundown, pick the shot on Come you understand? Finally, you did it with busted buffers. You can do it with this. Let's go around. Right. Come on, Jeff, you hit him in the body. This has been a fight between a junkyard dog from Georgia and a big old great Dane from Brooklyn. Amen to that. I love, the world's going to love that big great Dane because he's, he'll lick you, but he'll also bite you. If punched at number square with the judges' impressions, Evander Holyfield must need a knockout to save his heavyweight championship. Harold Letterman, give us your quick Larry, score. 107, 101, eight rounds to three, Riddick Bow. I have Riddick Bow in a commanding six-point lead. I have to suspect that the other judges are pretty close to that number, maybe just a little bit tighter, but Holyfield seems to understand that he would need a knockout. He does not seem to have the ammunition to go after it. Evander Holyfield groomed himself through his cruiserweight career to ultimately gain the weight and the musculature necessary to compete for the heavyweight championship of the world. He thought through all of the years he would have to fight and beat Mike Tyson to get it. In the end, it didn't happen that way. And the public has consistently penalized this man for not having won the championship from Tyson, but rather from an overweight, out of shape Buster Douglas. Tonight, he wanted to prove his legitimacy. And if nothing else, he has proven what we already knew about him. Extraordinary courage, spectacular heart and will. What he hasn't had is the muscle and the size to compete with Riddick Bull. I think for once, I'd like to hear the crowd say, Holy field, holy field. This guy deserves it. Ironically, of course, he may be earning more respect in his first defeat than he has earned in his 28 victories. We can't say defeat yet. You never know what these judges are going to do. It's like a beauty contest. Look at that, look at that. 
Let's go. Riddick Bowe has withstood criticism, called a dog okay, let's go. and a slacker by many earlier in his career. When Rock Newman took him on as a management project, some of Rock Newman's friends and allies in boxing told him, no, don't bother with Riddick Bowe. He won't get anywhere. But Newman and Bowe believed in each other. They made it here tonight. And it appears that the big man from Brooklyn is about to make it pay off. I can tell you one thing, that terminology of the St. Bernard and the Junkyard Dogs, they belong to me. Larry stole them from me. <laughs> I gave it to them. Not the first great idea that we've stolen from you, George, and it won't be the last. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was only teasing, kind of. From the back of the arena now, they begin to rise and applaud what has been an extraordinary battle between two men of heart and will and courage and skill. Well, we said earlier that a lot of people came here, Jim, expecting a, uh, a change of administrations in the heavyweight division. And right now, most people here probably think they're getting one. As we said, this has not been a great year for, or a great month for incumbents. Before you hot The seeds were sown in Holyfield's difficult title George defenses go? against you, George Foreman. That's right. Against Two Bert minutes, Cooper, a war in which he was almost knocked out. Against Larry Holmes, in which his eye was badly cut, and he wound up having to brook considerably more difficulty than most had thought would be the case. There's a melee in Bo's corner now. As we look at a replay from round number 11, The kind of punishment that Holyfield absorbed through most of the last two rounds, indeed much of the last three rounds, he was almost out in round number 10. What is the disturbance, Larry? All right, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Chuck Jampa scores about 115 to 112. Jerry Roth scores at 117 to 110. And Dalby Shirley, 117 to 110 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick. of him is manager Rock Newman told me this morning that he couldn't believe through all the effort he had put in to get to this point that Friday the 13th of November had finally arrived I said Rock you're gonna build a stable of fighters he said when Riddick Bowe is gone I'll be gone too and here is the fallen champion beaten but perhaps more champion tonight than ever before. Never seen a, such a spectacular heavyweight fight. Evander Holyfield well, is going to be top. That could be a great rematch, mind you. Oh, great I think there'll rematch. be tremendous public demand after what we saw tonight. Rematch is needed. But we'll be getting to the business of the heavyweight division in just a few minutes. There are lots of wrinkles to observe. Riddick Bowe has signed contracts which obligate him to fight Lennox Lewis, the man who knocked out Razor Ruddock in London two weeks ago. There's widespread speculation that Bo and Newman have a different plan. Final punch stat numbers, George. Let's look and see what the tale of punch count statistics will tell us. And one thing that it will demonstrate, which I think is the ultimate difference in the fight, is that the bigger, 
stronger man, Bo, was also the much busier fighter tonight. You, I guess, 